Well, it's a busy Monday as we start the week. We've got the risk for severe weather across the Gulf Coast, tornadoes possible, even damaging winds. We've got heavy snow, even a blizzard across central parts of the United States. Good Monday. I'm Travis Roberts. Thanks for watching. I'm a former TV chief meteorologist. It's a new channel, so make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and uh, get those notifications. That way you can get these updates. Now, let's just jump straight into it because we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to start with the Weather Prediction Center's outlook and map of what's going on across the country, and then we'll hop into the models and really dig into the details. Severe weather looking likely here across the south the risk of tornadoes increasing across southern parts of Louisiana, also Mississippi and Alabama as we head into the afternoon and tonight. Heavy rain possible further north. We are also going to be dealing with some icing as that system moves into the Appalachians heading into tonight. Not a lot. In fact, it, even into the Ohio Valley, most of this will change to rain as we move through the day Tuesday. But this is where the heavy snow is. Back across Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, and then that snow is shifting off to the north and east. We're talking about Iowa, Wisconsin, Chicago. Hey, that snow looking a little more more likely for you now compared to what it looked like yesterday and then lighter snows off to the north of that and then more heavy snow again falling here across the Cascades. A quick look at tomorrow's hazards. Big storms move to the east. We're talking about from the coastal plains of North Carolina, maybe moving even up into southern Virginia, all the way down into South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. The risk of strong storms with tornadoes again heading into Tuesday and then heavy rain across the east coast and coastal flooding is going to be a concern because a lot of wind with our storm as, our, as it moves toward the Great Lakes. Heavy snow moving toward Wisconsin, Iowa, up into Michigan too. So this is going to be a big snowmaker for you guys. A lot of you have not seen very much snow this year. But in places where it normally snows, if you've not seen any snow, let me know. I'm just curious because I was looking at some of the maps this year. Almost a snow drought up in these areas. So it's been very interesting so far this year. And you want to talk about a colorful warning and watch map and advisories. Look at this. We've got wind advisories all across the south. Flood watch is already up. Winter storm watch is even for Maine because Maine will get impacted with some snow with this here. Here's your blizzard warnings back across Kansas. Those have been extended up into Nebraska. Winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories, even more heavy snow warnings and blizzard warnings across the Cascades. So this is a very active map. Weather.gov is where you need to get your warnings. So make sure you have a way to get the updated warnings and watches as they come out. You can't overlook the severe weather aspect of this storm because the potential for tornadoes, strong damaging winds is there. This is the Storm Prediction Center's outlook. It's valid. Basically, Eastern time, we're going to say 7 a.m. Monday to 7 a.m. Tuesday central time take an hour off that so 6 a.m. to Monday to 6 a.m. Tuesday but look at this a slight risk and even an enhanced risk here across southern parts of Texas Louisiana Mississippi Alabama even the panhandle of Florida with an enhanced risk right here along the coast you know this is pretty interesting you've got this hashed area for an enhanced risk for tornadoes here a 10 percent chance so we're definitely seeing that we're talking about Baton Rouge Mobile over to Lafayette make sure you have a way to get emergency weather information your phone NOAA weather radio I know it's old school but it's a way that you can keep updated with any warnings that come out. And again, even further north of that, there's still a chance for some stronger storms here with this system. It's a very dynamic system with lots of upper level winds, lots of wind shear. Tuesday, that storm threat shifts to the east. This is the Storm Prediction Center's forecast for Tuesday. This would be from 7 a.m. Tuesday Eastern to 7 a.m. Wednesday. And we're talking about an enhanced threat from Florida, parts of Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. And here, check this out. That tornado threat expands, especially into the coastal plain here and up along right here just off the Gulf Coast and the Panhandle of Florida, Southeast Alabama and Georgia. And you know, don't discount a 2% or even a 5% chance. There's a lot of wind shear with this system. Now let's talk about the snow aspect of it. We're taking the snow totals. This is through Thursday morning. That snow ribbon stretching from Western Kansas and Colorado all the way into Michigan and some parts of Northern New England will also get some heavy snow out of this and big time snow across the Cascades where blizzard warnings are up here as well. And you know, to me, it looks like we're just putting a glacier down over the next couple of weeks here. Not a lot of snow up here. I was looking at some of the analysis here. A bit of a snow drought, if you will. It's one of the reasons I think we've had a hard time getting the cold air here. There's not been much snow on the ground. We finally got some snow cover here across western Canada. So when that cold air moves south, it doesn't get modified. It stays colder for longer. And that's also going to enhance the cold next week as we look south of this snow. Because now that we've got a snowpack on the ground, any Arctic air moving south will move across that snow. The albedo effect will kick in, which is, of course, sun reflecting off that white snow. We've got a low sun angle, so that Arctic air definitely has more of a chance of moving further to the south, and it looks like that's going to happen heading into next week. Let's talk about the storm today as it moves across the Plains states. It's going to bring that heavy snow here into parts of Kansas. Now it looks like northwest Missouri, Iowa, even into parts of Illinois once we move toward 
early Tuesday morning. This will impact the morning commute from Chicago, Rockford, up into Wisconsin. We're talking about Madison, even Green Bay getting some heavy snow here. Des Moines, we are definitely going to see some heavy snow. And then as that wraps up, moving into tomorrow night, we see the heavy snow break out into parts of Michigan and New England. What's interesting here, though, is that strong southerly flow will change the the snow and mix over to just rain. Now, I'm going to back things up just a little bit because we skipped over a couple of other things with this storm. Again, heavy rain across the south as we move through the day Tuesday. That severe weather threat, as I've showed you guys there on the maps, will shift to the east coast. And out ahead of this storm, strong damaging winds possible. And here comes that heavy snow into the west coast, Cascades, into the Intermountain West with more snow here. Here's a closer look at the overnight run of the European model dumping up to a foot of snow. Anything over the purple here is more than six inches. Anything over blue is more than two inches. And anything over really a hot pink is more than a foot. A couple of places getting very close to that here. Chicago, we are looking at six to eight, maybe 10 inches of snow. And north of Chicago, I think that's the sweet spot for a foot. The latest NAM model actually takes some of this snow and shifts it to the south. So if you're maybe in central Illinois, if you're in northwest Indiana, I don't know that you're out of the woods for seeing a heavy snow band, especially with the latest run of the NAM trying to bring down that snow to the south a little bit further. And across the west, I'm telling you what we're talking about one two maybe three feet of snow and you get up on top of the mountains maybe more over the next week or so blizzard conditions here snow levels are super low so snoqualmie pass stevens pass you know this is a huge snow here and more snow down into the the sierra as well and that snow works inland into montana idaho and even into parts of colorado as we move through the week Taking a closer look at the system in the east, you know, there will be some ice on the front end of this. I'll talk briefly about that, but across parts of Virginia, West Virginia, it's not going to last very long. You can see here by 10 a.m., most of that really starting to transition over to rain, even into parts of Ohio where we get a rain sleet snow mix freezing rain mix everything warms up and we see just plain rain as we move toward the afternoon on tuesday it's heavy snow across parts of pennsylvania new york before we see that transition over to rain it could come down pretty quick for a little bit and then again it warms up coastal flooding certainly possible now there are coastal flood watches out for some of these areas. Again, weather.gov is where you need to get that information. But the winds will be fierce. I want to show you that wind field in just a moment. And then here comes the cold air behind it, that heavy snow moving toward the Great Lakes. Some big snows here in the parts of Maine as the system moves off to the east with some snow showers across the Appalachians and Ohio Valley heading into early Wednesday morning. This snow doesn't look like a lot, but it certainly could impact that morning commute. And then as we move into the day Wednesday and then part of Thursday, into Thursday, really that system is pretty much gone and we're done with it. Icing certainly possible, not a lot. You can see maybe a tenth of an inch or so. Few areas could see some more, but it's not a huge ice storm by any stretch. But it doesn't take much ice to cause problems. You guys know that. Take a look at the wind field, though, as we move through the day Tuesday. Again, with those severe thunderstorms, we're going to see some strong damaging winds. But even outside of where we're seeing strong storms, strong southerly and southeasterly winds and even easterly winds here will be gusting up to 60 miles per hour in some spots, especially east of them, or I should say west of the mountains here where we get that downsloping flow. And then as this system moves toward the coast, look at these winds here right along the coast. 65, gusting to 70, gusting to 75. Did you see that? I mean, that's crazy. Look right here along, I guess that's Block Island showing up here. You know, you head up toward Nantucket. I think we see gusts potentially over hurricane force with this. So it, it is going to be a super strong storm. And then behind this system, some strong winds as well. Nothing like what we're seeing out ahead of it, but easily gusts of 40, maybe even 50. Very windy for the next couple of days across the East Coast for sure. Now beyond this system, it doesn't quiet down. In fact, we're watching another system that's going to be hammering parts of the Central Plain states. The overnight run of the European model insists that this storm is going to happen. Another one basically putting snow down in the same spots we're seeing. This one may be just a little bit further to the south, but this almost looks like what we're dealing with today, right? And then tomorrow, that heads toward the Great Lakes. So areas that are seeing snow, looks like you're going to see more snow heading into the week. But I think that builds my case too. We were saying we're going to build a glacier here. Here comes some very cold Arctic air once we move toward the weekend. And that's going to set the stage for some cold air moving south. And that also pushes the storm track further to the south. Now, I don't know that I buy into this, but check out what the European is hinting at heading into next Monday. We are talking seven days out. It's hinting at a storm moving across or at least trying to form across parts of Texas. Do we get snow in Texas? Hey, this might be your chance. Do we get it in Arkansas, northern Mississippi? Is this going to be our first big snow for the mid-Atlantic? 
It's showing up. We're also looking at next Tuesday, not tomorrow, eight days out. You know, next week we're talking about some real cold air moving in. Look at these numbers, 30 below showing up on the models. We've got near zero temperatures as far south as Kansas and Missouri next week. And then look, the cold moves into Texas, even toward the Gulf Coast as we move into Monday and Tuesday of next week. So if we do get a storm here, you could see it's plenty cold. That cold has suppressed that storm track a little bit further to the south, which lines up with what the European is showing here. Now, this is just the operational run. Of course, the ensembles may be telling a bit of a different story. But look at this cold air showing up. The fact that it's even showing up on the operational run is impressive. 20s in Houston, very close to freezing as far south as Browns. When you get back into Austin, we're talking about teens and 20s. This could be some real cold, not just for Texas, but all across the south next week. Something we're going to keep an eye on. I'm going to be watching it. So hit subscribe, get these notifications when they come out. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great Monday and a great rest of your week.